Hi everyone, Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Vienna, Austria. Today is jazz time and I'm going to teach you the basic jazz chords for comping. So there are five chord families and I'm going to teach you how to play them from the E and the A string. Actually, I'll also be showing you how to practice those jazz chords and explain the theory behind them. I have a free PDF with those chords uh, uh, for free to download from my website. The link is down below in the description. And now let's get jazzy. Okay, let's start with the E string. And actually let's uh, play in the key of C throughout the video so you can compare the different chord voicings easier. All right. We on the E string, we want to uh, search for a C, which we find on the 8th fret of the E string. First thing we want to do is play a major 7 voicing. A major 7 consists of the root, which we call 1 also, the 3rd, the major 3rd, the 5th and the major 7. Okay, we have the, the roots here and we don't play the A string, so we mute it, which we do with the index finger, okay? We mute this string, the A string. Then we have the major 7th on the 9th fret of the um, D string, which is one fret below the octave. So the octave of the C would be on the 10th fret, and a major 7 is always, always one fret below the octave. So we get this weird sounding interval. It gets more nice when we add the other uh, chord tones. Right below it is the major third. We played with the pinky. We are on the ninth fret of the G string now. And then we have a fifth right below the um, root, but on a B string. So on the eighth fret of the B string. So we have eight, mute, nine, nine, and eight. We don't play the uh, high E string as well, and we, we mute it with, uh, I would say, the index finger. Okay, so you can play with your right hand with your fingers, or use a pick and your fingers, which is called hybrid picking. You play the pick in, in the bass and, and middle ring and, and pinky. This is unusual for some people who've never played hybrid picking, but the pinky is involved now in the right hand, and you hit all the strings at once. Okay, if you mute correctly, you could also strum, but usually we play hybrid picking. All right, let's make a dominant chord out of this C major 7 chord. And there's only one tone of a difference between a major 7 chord and a dominant 7 chord, and that's a 7th. Major 7 has, as the name implies, a major 7th. While a dominant 7 chord, just like C7, D7, E7, has a flatted 7th or a, a minor 7, I think you call this. Okay, so we search for the 7th because our voicing remains the same now all the time. We have 1, 7, 3, 5. Now the 7 will be here all the time. It's laying here all the time. Now we move this 7th to the flat 7th, minor 7th. On what we get, we need to refret, replace actually our fingers, refret our fingers, reposition our fingers, that's the word I was looking for. Okay, from the 9th to the 8th fret, and what we have now is 8, 8, we play nothing on the A string, 9 and 8. 8, 8, 9, 8, that's a C7 chord, C dominant chord, we also call it. You can also play this with your thumb, index, ring, and middle finger. But you really need to watch out not to play the A string. You, you don't usually uh, mute this, uh, the A string with your thumb, because then you need to go over like this. If you have a long thumb, though, then you can do that. But usually we do it with uh, the index finger from below, touching it. All right. Okay. This is a C7 chord. Now we want to go over from C7 to C minor 7. The difference, you can hear it in a word. 
C7, C minor 7, is that we now have a minor third in there because minor chords have minor thirds and major chords have major thirds. So a dominant chord is a major chord and a minor chord is obviously a minor chord. So the third um, lies here on the ninth fret that was a, or is a major third and we want to make it minor, we move it to the left. Now we have all, all the uh, tones on the eighth fret. Okay, we do not play it like this. You get a better advantage out of fretting it like this and I'll explain you why. Because we often play cadences in, in, in jazz, two five ones, and, and the five chord is just right below it. So we just have to make this. Actually, the middle finger goes over the ring finger a bit. Otherwise, your middle finger would end up on the seventh fret. You want it on the eighth fret. So turn it a little around and place your middle finger over the ring finger, just a tad. Okay, that's weird in the beginning, I know. But it's so comfortable once you can do that it's just like okay well this takes forever now from the minor seven to the half diminished the half diminished is also called minor seven flat five so what is the difference between a minor seven and a minor seven flat five chord the flat five the minor seven has a, a, re a perfect fifth you call this and the minor seven flat five has a flattened fifth. So the fifth was or is here. And if you want to flat it, it goes one fret below to the uh, seventh fret. So now we have eight, 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 seven. You could play it like this with all your fingers available. But I suggest, I recommend to you to play it with your thumb. Thumb on the uh, E string, middle D, ring on the G, and index here. Also, don't play it like this, okay? This is of no use at all. Because if we want to have a finger left, then it would be the pinky, you know, to do some more stuff here. But never we need this, so. Why do I suggest you playing this with, the, uh, with your thumb? Because again, we have a lot of two fives, this time in minor, and it's easier to change over to the 2-5, okay, instead of, takes too long, okay, just get used to that thumb thing, okay, you can do it, you don't need to uh, press it hard and, and bend over, or you know, just a slight touch, a little pressing, and, 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 and it's okay, it's good, and dampen, mute your A string with the middle finger, okay, so if you want to strum, it doesn't sound like this, right? Okay, last chord, last uh, family is diminished. That was, this was half diminished. Now we have diminished or fully diminished. The diminished chord, well, what else can we diminish? Haven't we diminished everything? Yes, we have. And now we need to double diminish the seventh. We started out with a major seven chord having this uh, major seven here on the uh, ninth fret. Then we flatten the seventh for several chords, having it here. And now we double flat it, which actually turns into a sixth. A major sixth is the same as a flatted, flatted seventh. That sounds weird, I don't know. And it's here now. Everything else remains the same. So what we have is our C, the root, the flatted, flatted seventh. The ring finger is on the ninth fret of the um, G string. And the B string is played by the bar on the seventh. So eight, seven, eight, seven. Make sure we, you hear that B string ringing. Because a lot of people have difficulties barring this. Okay, and what it turns out is, okay, we don't, we don't want to uh, mute, accidentally mute the uh, B string, so press it hard. Because that's a flat five, that's a very um, important uh, tone on, in this chord. Okay, let's revisit what we've learned so far. Major seven, eight, nine, nine, eight. 
dominant 7, 8, 8, 9, 8, or with the thumb, minor 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, minor 7 flat 5 or half diminished, 8, 8, 8, 7, and diminished, 8, 7, 8, 7. All right, let's change over to the A string. Well then, here's the A string. Let's search for a C on the A string. We find it on the third fret of the A string. Okay, now we have a, uh, what is it? One, five, seven, three voicing. We play the inner four strings, the center four strings, okay? Only no E strings here in this voicing. We start out with a major seven uh, voicing again. So we have uh, one, three, five, seven. But the order now is one, five, seven, three. So, okay, here's our one, which is the root. Next is our one, five, seven, three. So we have a five. This is a f the fifth. Uh, some of you may know that uh, from power chords. That's a fifth, okay? Then the seventh, and we are in a major chord. So major seventh chord. So this is the major 7th. We already had the same interval structure here on the E chord. I said one below the octave. And here is the octave. And here is the major 7. Same thing, right? Okay, so 1, 5th and the 7th. This is the 3rd of the A string, the 5th of the D string, and the 4th uh, of the G string so far. And we're still missing our 3rd, and this is on the B string on the um, on the fifth fret so this is a one a five uh, one five seven three voicing and the frets are third fret fifth fret fourth fret fifth fret no e strings okay c major seven let's change it to c seven c dominant chord all we have to do is change the major seven to the minor seven. This is the seven, one, five, seven, three. Seven, we have to make it, we have to diminish it to make it a flat seven. So it turns from the fourth, fring into, uh, fourth uh, fret into the third fret. And the third fret has a bar, we can bar it. So this would be major and this is a uh, dominant seventh. Now we have the bar on the third, five, bar on the third, five. <clears throat> we usually, uh, you can bar over to the E string, but usually we don't play the E string, okay? When we comp, comping usually goes to the B string only. That's the highest note. That's because we want to get too high. We want to get, don't want to get uh, into the way of the vocals or the, the, the person who plays the melody part. Okay, from C7 to C minor seven, we need to change the, ma the major third, which is here, into a minor third, which is here. So we get three, five, three bar, and four. Third fret, fifth fret, third fret, fourth fret. Bar it on the third. Okay. From C minor seven to C minor seven flat five, we uh, change the fifth to the flat fifth. So the fifth was here and now we change it to the flat fifth we don't want to do that because we're breaking our fingers here so we play it like this third fourth fret third fret and fourth fret why don't we want to bar it like this okay why not because if you strum you might hit the bar the barred uh, third chord uh, third fret which is a perfect fifth, but we need a flat fifth. So we have a flat fifth here and, and, and a regular fifth here. That sounds, that's simply wrong, okay? So you wanna fret it like this. But be careful not to play the two E strings. You actually mute the low E string here with your index by touching it and the high E string you mute it by touching it with the index as well. Here, somewhere, okay? Dep 
depends on how long your fingers are. All right. This was the half diminished chord or minus seven flat five. And now change over, let's change over to the fully diminished chord, which is this. We change the seventh. Here is the seven, one, five, seven, three. Here's the seventh. And we need to flatten it once again. So here we go to the second fret of the G string. And now we have to kind of flip our fingers around. And this is the third of A with the middle finger, fourth of D, second of uh, G, that's our flatted seventh, and the fourth of B, three, four, two, four. Okay, from half diminished to diminished. Okay, let's revisit. C major seven, uh, third, fifth, fourth, fifth, C dominant seventh, bar on the third, fifth of D and fifth of um, uh, B, C minor seven, bar three, fifth of D and fourth of B, half diminished, third, fourth, third, fourth, and diminished. 3, 4, 2, 4. Now let's practice our chords. First we practice them horizontally. And we take only the E string chords first. So I recommend the song All the Things You Are because it has all five chord families included. We're going to pick out the first four four chords or so in, in the um, uh, from the song, which are F minor, B flat minor, E flat seven, and A flat major seven. Okay, what we do is we take our E string chords only and search for the first chord, which is an F minor chord, F minor seven. So um, we search for an F on the E string, here it is, and the minor shape for this is this, F minor seven. Some people have difficulties fretting it this way because of uh, the neck and the position of the first fret. So you can also fret it like this if you want, okay? But only on the first in, in on, on the first fret. But actually it should work like this. The second bar is B flat minor seven. All you need to do is shift it over to B flat. We're just playing E chords now, okay? This is B flat minor seven, minor seven on the sixth fret. Okay, now we have an E flat seven chord. That's a dominant chord. We search for the E flat, which is on the eleventh fret, and we need the dominant voicing, which was like this: eleven, eleven, twelve, eleven, or with your thumb. It doesn't matter. And then we have an A flat major chord. So we search on the E string, an A flat. Here it is on the fourth fret. And we play the major voicing. So we have four, five, five, four. So this would be the first bars. Now, I know it sounds awkward and feels awkward if you just jump across the fretboard, but this is just a kind of pre-exercise because we want to avoid having it all together, okay? It's going to be a turmoil in our brain otherwise, so let's start easy. The next thing you're going to do is you take those same changes or maybe the next uh, four bars of that song and uh, Use the A chord, uh, A chord voicings. So let's start with F minor 7 again and search the F on the A string now. It's on the 8th fret. Okay, and an F minor, a minor 7 shape was like that. So this would be an F minor 7. Then we have a B flat minor 7. Here we go, B flat is on the first fret, minus seven again, so just need to shift down. First fret, one, three, one, two. Then it's for the E flat seven, dominant chord. We search for an E flat on the A string. 
sixth fret, voila, and this is the dominant voicing shape. Six, eight, six, eight. And the last chord was on A flat major seven. So we slide up to the A flat on the 11th fret and fret our major voicing. That's 11, 13, 12, 13. Okay, play the whole song because it has all five um, chord families uh, with the E string chords and then take a break or do it the next day with the A string, um, with the A string voicings. All right, that's the way you practice horizontally. Now that you've learned to play horizontally, we want to mix it all together and play vertically, which is actual, actually the real life uh, playing, okay? The way we play normally. Okay, we search for, we take the um, all the things you are chords again. Let's start from the beginning, F minor seven. So we search for an F minor seven, somewhere in the middle I suggest, because there is an F minor seven down here, but it gives us absolutely no uh, possibilities to go to the left uh, for the next chord, just to the right. So let's better pick the one in the middle, okay? And this would be the A string chord. So we start with the F minor seven here, okay? And now what you have to do is you always have to find the nearest chord possible. That's very important, okay? It sounds better and it doesn't make you jump around the fretboard, which uh, costs a lot of time. All right, so what you do is first you, you search for the root. The next chord would be a B flat minor seven chord. So you search for a B flat that is close. The closest, uh, nearest B flat is here on the sixth. So we don't wanna jump to the first fret like we did before in a horizontal practice, but rather here to the 6th fret. Th those are just two frets apart from the 8th fret F minor to the 6th fret B minor. And now B flat, sorry. And a minor 7 chord from the E string. Look at your sheet. I gave you a PDF for free so uh, you can have it in front of you. And this is your minor chord from the E string, minor 7. So you change from here to here. All right, please don't bar it because then you can never strum it because there would be a fourth in there, okay? That would be a wrong note. So play it like this, okay? Next is an E flat seven, a dominant chord. And what's the closest E flat tone? It's not here, that's too far away, big distance. It's right below the B flat. Learn your notes your tones, sorry, your tones well on the uh, E and A string. Those are very important. B flat and here's the, oops, here's the E flat. So, and the dominant chord from the A street, the string looks like this. Okay, so you change from B flat minor seven to E flat seven. Next chord is the A flat major seven. Okay, the nearest A flat is here. Okay, we won't choose uh, the 11th fret, but rather the 4th fret. It's way closer to the 6th. So 4th fret of the E string and a major chord from the E string. We've learned this already. That's 4, 5, 5, 4. So that's what it looks like now. The first four bars of, uh, all, not autumn leaves, all the things you are. F minor 7, B flat minor 7. Seven, A flat major seven. Okay, let's continue for a couple bars. D flat major seven would be next. That's right, be ne uh, right below, and A string major chord is this four six five six. Then we have a D minor seven, D flat where D flat is D minor can't be far, so it's next. Minor seven voice sync from the A string is here. Next we have a G7, G7, this is the closest G, and from the uh, dominant chord from the E string is this, and now the resolution, and that's where we're going to finish, the C major chord, C is right below the G, A string voicing, just the D, like the D flat we had before, 
but on a C. Okay? I hope I was of help with your first steps into jazz chords. There will be a lot more videos out like this one from me um, with tension chords and more complex chords, so stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel and please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. See you next time. Ciao!